Hey everybody, my name is Damien DeNoble. I'm an attorney here at Frontier Tech Law from our New Haven, Connecticut studios. And I am talking to you today about the H2B program and its coming expansion. So the H2B program has forever been a 66,000 year per, uh, per year visa capped program. And that has for a long time now been many fewer visas than employers entering the program require. Um, and it has been underserving, essentially, the American employers who need temporary workers. There has always been a push and pull uh, tug of war of sorts between those who think that the program, if left unchecked or allowed to go without a cap, would hurt American workers, and those employers who say, hey, I can't get American workers for these positions anyway. This program is the only way I can get those workers and these caps and other limitations of the program make it really hard to actually participate in it well. And so that conversation, which has been going on for the better part of three decades, really accelerated over the past three years in the Biden administration. And what we're seeing now for the first time is that the program effectively doubled in size with last week's announcement that 66,000 visas would be made available in addition to the 66,000 visas already available. That might not be exact number. I think they said something like 68,000, but effectively doubling the program for this year, um, even though there's going to be timing issues, et cetera, et cetera. But what's going on behind the scenes is that that announcement, which would have been unthinkable in prior years, right? The, the, the announcement of additional visas, just for those who don't know the history of the program, has always been slow walked so that we would only hear for October visas in like December or sometimes January that additional visas would be released. Actually, we only had one release for October. What am I talking about? We heard about it in December. They were released in January of last year. But for the April program, they, the announcement would come late, May, June. So then those additional workers wouldn't get here till July, sometimes August, which would just totally not benefit the workers that needed or would in theory be interested in applying for workers that were available beyond those available through the lottery. Um, and so what's been happening is uh, when, when this uh, announcement came out, everybody was looking at what would the Department of Labor say, what would unions say, and there was no pushback to the announcement from the Department of Homeland Security. In fact, there seems to be broad agreement at this moment, which we've never really seen politically, that this program needs to be expanded and that these additional visas are warranted and that there is sufficient balance between the rights and interests of American workers and American employers in order for the program to be expanded. This comes down to this unprecedented economic employment situation that we're in, where businesses across the country, due to a variety of factors that, has, that have to do with demographics, that have to do with COVID, that have to do with early retirements, that have to do with new positions being opened up, and other companies that have to do with record low employ, uh, unemployment, um, are leaving many seasonal employers in the lurch, right? They just can't find people to fill their spots, right? You, you see the help wanted signs um, in your towns kind of being posted everywhere. At any rate, it's, it's, it's ripe time for this program to be expanded, and it looks like it will be. So the conversations right now are anywhere from, you know, doubling to tripling to quadrupling the program possibly over the next few years. Nobody knows where the number will land. But what's clear is that demand is somewhere around a quarter million visas per year, right? You've got to figure 70,000 visa applications for the October fiscal year cycle this year, 2022-2023. Last year, we had about 170,000 people apply for the April cycle. You add those two numbers together, that's about, two, that's about a quarter million visas, right? And we're going to see a higher number even in this April cycle. And so if we can get there and we can reinstall the provision of this program, which allows returning workers to be exempted, all of a sudden you're going to have, sorry, the camera shook, all of a sudden you're going to have a behemoth of a program that is really going to be finally something that American employers who have temporary worker need are going to be able to depend on in order to get help. And it could really be transformative for the American economy. And more than ever, it's going to become important for employers that participate in the program to be good participants because one of the things that, you know, is being talked about is like, let's, we talk a lot about penalizing bad employers. Well, what about, uh, you know, giving benefits to good employers in the program who have been there a while, like making them the, you know, making them be essentially the ones that are eligible to get returning workers, right? After a certain number of like successful applications, after a certain number of, you know, years participating in the program without any demerits, why don't you get certain benefits like being able to bring returning workers without going through the lottery? 
What this really means is that if you're thinking about entering the program or, you know, you've kind of been doing it, you know, half-heartedly and not really succeeding, maybe it's time to get your ducks in a row and really try to enter this program now on the uh, ground floor, even though, you know, it's packed. I say that kind of, it's ironic, but also in a way true, because when the program does expand and when we do see these kind of positive changes come into it, it could really be transformative for your temporary seasonal business. So anyway, th these are conversations that I heard, right? I'm part of the Seasonal Employer Alliance. Um, there's conversations that happen every week. And, uh, you know, just, just keep this in mind as you're thinking about your next cycle. Remember, prevailing wages should be going in. Last prevailing wage, I would say, you know, first week in November. And, you know, we're gonna be filing at the start of January for the April cycle. So these things are coming up. So if you are thinking about it, you know, make sure to uh, get on it. As always, I'll be taking clients through November 10th. You can reach me at info at frontierotech.com at 919-827-0660 or through the frontierotech.com website. My name is Damien Noble, attorney here at Frontier Tech Law, and I'll see you in the next video.